This morning we're bringing you down to Lock 2 Park here in Nashville, Tennessee, where we're going to be meeting up with Christine, whose husband went missing a few months back. They would have been celebrating their 24th anniversary just a couple of days ago, and it is believed that Will may be underwater at this location. Our time here in Nashville would not be made possible without Omez, who is sponsoring this episode and bringing us in at no cost to the family. With Omaze, you'll also have a chance to win a 1973 Scout International 2 plus $20,000. All taxes and shipping are included in that one. With every donation supporting the pediatric cancer program here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt. This is one episode you are not going to want to miss today. It becomes emotional days for us as well, so we're we're in this with you. Let's see what we can do to bring Will home. Bill. Bill. Sleep. I don't know why I keep calling. Yeah. So we have a chair for you today. If you need a chair. I'm probably not gonna stay. I live two minutes okay. away. Okay. What would you like us to do to stay in communication with you today? Do you have somebody that's gonna be down here that's gonna be able to update um, you? I can come back like every hour so do whatever I mean you tell me I can't okay well I've, I've got your number and so if you can just kind of bring us up to you know up to speed as to bill our situation how you reached out or who reached out to us and you know the reason why we're here today I wonder why um, the metal set thing is like black rocks is a prideful man very prideful so he he got neuropathy and lymphedema and he couldn't walk to the bathroom and back without just being in excruciating pain. And he still went to work every day, worked 10 hours a day. And they told him that he was going to have to go on disability and that, that you know, wasn't going to happen. Right. You mentioned that, you know, he left the house in the morning, no, no shoes, no, no wallet. Sho no, he left in a pair of shorts and socks. And he could not drive any more than a mile normally? Would, not without shoes on. He can't even go to the bathroom without shoes on. Okay. His shoes had to stay on except he was asleep. Okay. So that's why we don't think he ever left. Okay. So three vehicles have been identified at this boat ramp and then we're going to go mark them. And is that your With mom? My mom. Okay. Mom, you can come on down if you'd like to. This is my support dog for the day. Yeah. <laughs> she loves everybody. She might lick you to death. <laughs> right. So this boat ramp is closest to your house. Yes. We've also been advised that there's also like a priest lake. Yeah. Or something nearby. Is that too far for? We think so. Okay. I mean, it's not far, but it's far enough to where I don't. Because the way he goes to there, because there's a water park out there that we went to every weekend okay he would have to get on the interstate and I don't think okay I mean, okay well we've got uh, all of our stuff set up you know we got the boat and sonar and everything so we're gonna jump in out there on the water identify what vehicles at what what vehicle are we looking for today you're looking for a 2005 Toyota Camry it's gold it has a sunroof okay on the back glass is the Leonard Skinner sticker okay it's got a Vanderbilt License plate on the front. Okay. Do you know the plate number? I, mean, we'll know. I, ha I can. Okay. So Leonard sticker, sunroof, Toyota Camry, gold. I can text it to you. Okay. I, I don't know it, but I have it written down. Okay. Oh, last thing also. <laughs> how long ago did this occur? June fifteenth. Okay. Of this year. Also, the day of his mother's, the first day in Russia of his mother's death. Oh no. So it was, just, you know. Bunch of things. All a lot of stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, you know, okay. the pain, the thinking about going on disability. Yeah. And then his mom. I. It was just the trifecta of the all other. the things. Well, we uh, we should be able to identify what vehicles are in here in the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes, and then we're going to dive on it after that. So we're going to do everything we can for you to be okay. You. You're welcome. I just miss him so much. 
And, and you guys just had, had a uh, anniversary? Yeah, Monday would, would have been our 24th anniversary. Okay. Well, we're gonna see if we can use some answers today. I mean, if, if anything, you'll have answers whether he's here or whether we need to start looking somewhere else. So we're in town for the next two days to help you out and we're gonna do everything we can for you, okay? Thank you. We thank you for you know letting us come in. Um, thank you. you. Know, and, and the viewers that have reached out, you know, we have a sponsor today as well that's uh, stepped up to, you know, for some financial aid for us to be here today for you as well. So, um, yeah, and that's one thing that, you know, the, the family members ask right away. You know, yeah. the, the U.S. is yeah. like, we have no money, we can't afford for you to come in. And this is 100% volunteer i appreciate and, that because i would have you know when i told you i said it doesn't matter but him you know i would have done something to find the money yeah because so, i can't even get to our finances yeah so we, we yeah we don't want to put that burden on you and should we that. you know we're able to find bill today we'll make sure that you know we work with you to put a gofundme up and we'll actually get this you know up right away to help with those expenses that you have right now so especially being locked out of accounts yeah you. You're welcome. All right. Just, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll chat in okay. an hour, hour and a half or so, okay? Yep. We'll let you know. We'll Thank keep you updated. You. You're welcome. Thank you so much, y'all. And me. if you want to come back down, we've got chairs for you and whatever we can do to help you be comfortable, you're welcome to use the inside of the RV to relax, hide from people if you need to. And okay. we've got a... Do you have any words? No words. Uh, no, just the, this one, everyone is different. You know, like with Judy and Trudy, you know, we had a lot of laughter to cope with the, you know, effort coping mechanism. Yeah. This one is very, you know, solemn. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, different people deal with things in different ways. And there's nothing wrong with any of the ways. They're just all different. You know, we're all uh, catered to that individual. We still have a job to do, and we know we're going to do our piece and do our part. And at the end of it, hopefully we can provide some, some answers. Yeah, well before the, uh, I sense there's going to be some crowds showing up, so let's uh, get on the water. Yeah, let's get moving. I'm ready. You're ready. Yeah, we're only 12 feet deep here. So this river has a nice flow, so there's not going to be anything above the ramp. So we'll just start at the ramp and just hit the uh, shoreline. Pen down, then we can start making our way back up. Yeah, sounds good. What do we got right there? Maybe. So it's off to the right. 24 and that, so that's, that, that's not good enough. If this is your first time watching this, what we're looking for here is we have uh, anything in black is the water column. So you'll see we're 16 feet down, and this is 17 feet. So you'll see it's getting shallower. So the water is coming up. So anything black is, is water column. Oh, 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 here we go, right here. All right, so right there. Does that look like a wheel sticking up right there? Yeah, upside down. Wheel sticking up. So let's throw an actual anchor down. Let me go over it. Let's identify like kind of where it's at. Then we'll throw a 360 on there. Right here is where we're at. The dropper? No, nah, let me turn around. Okay. I want a different angle of this one. So we have two different spots. In this angle, it looks more like a tree. Uh, go ahead and drop it. Hit reverse. Move over to 360. All right, so right back here, we got a car that's upside down. You see the uh, muffler and everything right there? Yeah. Let's let out a little bit more line. Okay. So we dipped over the top of it. It appears to be a car. Not a pickup. Oh yeah, look at look at that wheel. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's a hundred percent. Though you can see the, the the dots and everything around that. Yeah. All the holes in the in the wheel. Yep. Hundred. Yeah, it's hundred percent. All right. So right off your side here, let's go ahead and magnet onto uh, the top of it. I'll let it sink, then I'll pull back. First try. Got her. Got it. Got it. Let's put a uh, buoy on it. Feels like it's coming up. I don't know if it's coming up from pulling us in. Yeah, we lost it. Drop it straight down, and then you got it. You should be right on it. I'm on it. That's yeah, we're good. That's, that. that's, yeah, uh, that's serious. All right, all right. Let's let's throw a um. Throw a buoy on. Throw the hook on it. Yeah, yeah. Throw a yeah. Throw an anchor directly on it. So kind of throw the anchor to the front a little bit. And drag it. Pull and back. Drag it until it, it snatches. Snag. Feels like this one's stuck. On it? Yeah, feels like it's stuck. You, you might actually be on it. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, like you said, it's not silted in at all. Yeah, no silt. It's fresh. 
I mean, it's only been four months, so. Do we want to keep marking them or should we just go one at a time? Uh, I'm good either way. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's off for city, you already know. So. Hey, thanks for coming down. Nice to meet you. Yes, thank you. Uh, what we have right now is, as you know, Christine has brought us in to try to find Bill, her husband. Mm -hmm. um, went missing back in June, and I don't know if you were a part of that case or not, or you just kind of caught wind. From no, I kind of just, uh, I saw you guys doing your one of your late, later videos and kind of knew you were coming to this area, so I just thought I'd reach out to you. and offer any assistance we could give you. Well, beautiful. You. So yeah, where we're at right now is we were informed that there were three vehicles in the river right here. Mm -hmm. We only found one of them so far. It's upside down. We can make out, you know, the wheel and the hubcap. You, of course you can't read, you know, license right, plates on yeah. sonar. Also, you also can't see like, hey, this is a Toyota Camry gold in color that we're looking for. This vehicle is not silted in at all. So it's not been that down there, you know, more than three or four months. Mm -hmm. So right now we do have it marked with the buoy out there. We're gonna suit up. And in the next 30 minutes or so, we should be able to identify if we have found Bill's vehicle, and we'll see if uh, we can identify if Bill's in the vehicle as well. So let's go ahead and do that, and uh, go from there. All right. Jacob, so we're gonna keep Christine updated as to the happenings, just okay. a quick text to her. I'm gonna let her make that decision as to when she wants to come down, but for now, we're just gonna let her know we did find the vehicle. We have located a vehicle on sonar, period. It is upside down, and it appears to have not been in the water more than a few months period. We are suiting up right now and we'll update you in 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, I've got the jollop, yeah. but um, yeah, I just like to... Alright, let's go. We're gonna hold on the line now. Don't get lost. Alright, should be coming up on the anchor. Where's it at? Anchor's right there. Alright, Sam, where's my car at? Alright, it's not over there. Downstream about 5-10 feet is what we're looking for. Alright, found the car. Here we go. They found a... Uh, is that an Ollie? Denali. Alright, this is a Denali. This is not a Camry. So this is upside down. Still on it. GMC. Got Sam on here. Is that Sam there? Get the inside of it here if we can. Not yet been able to identify what portion of the vehicle I'm at right now. Those are up on it there. Those down at the front. I'm going to attempt to dig this out a little bit, see if I, can, if I can identify inside, clear the vehicle. Right now, the driver's window is down, the other windows are up. It's tilted in so much, I can barely get my uh, hands in there to clear this. The nice thing about this river is that after we're done digging, at least it's moving the silt out. The seatbelt does not appear to be on. No matter what, this vehicle needs to come up. Although we're clearing the front right now, not mean that there might not be somebody else in here. I'm not currently feeling anything in the front driver's side. Is there a plate on the back? Let's see if we can pull a plate off of this. Okay, so it looks like the plate was tried to be torn off before. All right, we got the plate in hand. Right, right, right back to our shore. They're still searching. I searched pretty good, but I didn't see anything. I think sonar is the best option. Yeah, this is off the Denali. Right now what we have is uh, the, all the windows are up on it, except for the driver's side. Okay. The driver's side, however, is really buried in silt. Reached in as far as we could and dug out what we could <laughs> to identify if somebody was in the front seat. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say I don't believe anybody's in the front seat, but at the same time we need to 
Okay. Yeah, br bring the vehicle out to finish yeah, verifying that for sure. What do you think, Jared? We're gonna run a little more sonar while he's checking the plate. Oh yeah, next we'll identify. I mean, that one's coming out uh -huh. for sure. We yeah. have we have to take that out today. But yeah, let's run some, some more sonar. Let's see if we mark some other thing. Find something else. Yeah. Also, I think that that anchor really wasn't on there, but I was able to get to it. You were able to get to it. Yeah, we were both so on, we, we were both on the Denali, no problem. Yeah, so we can get back to it when we actually uh, focus on pulling that out today. Yeah, because you just drop on the anchor, then you head that way. Yeah. But yeah, let's see if we can find another people in here. Sounds good. So we're going through our systems here. It's coming back as not on file. Uh, that happens occasionally. Things just get lost in the system or yeah. they fall off. So unfortunately, we're not going to know anything from the plate alone. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for doing that yeah, part. Not a problem. All right. Hey, Jared. Yeah. He just ran the plate and says it's not in the system. It says sometimes things just kind of fall off. Okay. It's uh, police corruption and cover up, right? No, not necessarily. Unfortunately, it's probably more just of a, a government thing. Things get lost in the system. You know, yeah. uh, you know, we run cars not all the time, but occasionally they just come back not in the system. So it just means something didn't get typed into a computer ride. Good thing is, is that it's probably not or good or bad, whatever. It's probably not stolen. So it would be entered into the stolen system. That right. plate number would at least be entered into the stolen system. So it's not even coming back with that. So, so insurance fraud, which then normally they report them as stolen. So right, yeah. People just push cars off in the river, unfortunately, which you know that better than anybody probably. Okay. So. so so where I lean at then on this one, we're, when we're not in the system, it's not in the stolen system, mm -hmm. which means it wasn't insurance fraud. I then tend to lean to we have another missing persons case in Nashville that this might be associated with, and you know we've not cleared the entire vehicle. All right, let's go see if we can find the camera. Here, for those of you who see, hey, Sam's not wearing a life jacket and neither am I. Please know that uh, we are in our dry suits. Our dry suits are very buoyant. It is impossible to sink us. So anyway, if you do jump in a boat, please remember boating safety and to wear your life jacket. But anyway, if you don't see us wearing our life jackets right now, that's because we are completely zipped up. And we float. If Sam was not zipped up or my zipper was not zipped, then we would sink. So we are currently zipped up. So I'm gonna do a few things here, Sam. Go with a nice tight pattern back and forth into the shore and out. The other thing is, I don't know what types of storms they could have had in June. It's a Camry, it could float a little bit longer, so we could actually end up all the way down, you know, around the bend by that tree line as well. Yeah, that's on very true. What happened there? This yeah, time. you have the 10 to 12 minute float time. Yeah. You never know. Windows up. Yeah. What is this? I believe that might be another vehicle. What is this? Mm hmm. That's, that's definitely another vehicle. Yeah, that's or a, a boat or something. That's something. It comes up like five feet. Yeah. No, you can look. You can see it's upside down. It's right off that. Rock. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that right there. See? Yeah. Here, you can zoom in on it. I, almost like a pickup. Yeah. Yeah, it's right off that big that flat. That rock. big flat road. Yep. So I'm just gonna park this right here. Yeah, right out there. Felt like it. It certainly felt like something. Alright, he's back behind us now. I think it's a truck. You on it? Feels like it. Yeah, right, it feels pretty strong. Alright, right, just hold, don't move. Alright, we're holding. See, we're right over the top. Oh, of yeah, 100%. Yep. Alright, uh, let me go swim. Let me go swim over and grab my stuff real quick. Well, Why you hang for a minute? Well, I want to go down too. Yep, yeah, you'll be alright. Promise. Okay. Right. See you guys, I float. Want me to pull the plate regardless? Oh yeah, yeah, please pull okay. it out, pull it. As mentioned in the beginning of today's video, today's episode sponsor is Omaze, who is providing an opportunity for you to win a 1973 restored Scout 2. Taxes and shipping are included, and even better, every donation benefits a great cause here in Nashville at the Pediatric Cancer Program at the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt. So we really want to say thank you to Omaze for providing this opportunity to bring us into Nashville to help bring Will home to Christine. Enter for your chance to be the proud owner of the vintage Scout fully restored and customized by our friends at Bulletproof Restorations with the taxes and shipping costs included. So please do me a favor, check out the links in the description below.
Yeah, it's definitely not the car. Driver's side windows are down. I couldn't see anybody inside. It's ridiculously silted over. I no, I can't even find a license plate. I think they pulled the plates okay. and, and dumped it. So you, you don't even know what kind of car it is. Don't even know what kind of car it is. Upside some down? kind of some kind of sedan. Upside down or on? Uh, right side up. But the uh, the roof is so so disintegrated right now. Okay. Everything is just eaten and falling apart. So been in there for a while. A long time. Don't pull it. It's going to come apart. No, nope, long time. In fact, right. in fact, the uh, the sediment it's all the way up to the door. Okay. It's like the top of the you know where the where the window. If you were to roll down the window, right at the bottom of the door frame, right there. It's all the way still. Okay, I'll meet you up there. Speaking of Denali, what type of uh, report do we get from that? Uh, so I reached out to a contact that works for Metro Office of Emergency Management. He said their dive team, I guess, knows of a vehicle out here that they dove back when this gentleman first went missing. He said if if you on their end, if you guys want to pull it, they just ask that it doesn't get left on the ramp. Okay. And then he suggested to reach out to Metro Police. I reached out to them. Basically the same thing. If you guys want to pull it, you're more than welcome. Just don't leave it on the ramp. And then I made one more call to Metro Parks Police, who actually control this ramp. And same thing. If you guys want to pull it, just don't leave it on the ramp. Okay. So. Sounds good. And, and that's something we run into quite often. Like, um, please don't make it our problem. If you have the finances to do it and the volunteers, please go ahead and handle it. But don't call us. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. You know, it all comes down to budgets. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah, so, and I asked them if their dive team wanted to come out and look at it, and he said their dive commander's down with COVID right now, and so he's, okay. he doesn't want to send any dive team out. So. All right, understandable. We're going to go do some more sonar. Yeah. Like I said, there's one more that's out there that we're missing. Yeah, we found two out of the three. Yeah. yeah. This one was a family, like family sedan, four-door, mm -hmm. just brittle as all get out. Oh, yeah, at least they're, quick in here. It's oh, yeah, at least 30 years, and the, uh, and the silt was, you know, filled, on the inside, it was filled all the way up to the door frame. So it's been it's been there for a while, just solid. Hello. Hey, uh, Christine, Jared. Hey. Yeah. So we did identify that there is a, a third vehicle down here. It is also not the Camry and not Bill. So we did find all three vehicles. So where that leaves us right now is uh, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we can do a couple of things right now. One is two of the vehicles are not worth pulling at all. They're so far gone that they would just pull, pull apart. The, the uh, Denali is upside down. We did our what we could to identify the window that was open is on the pass or on the driver's side. We reached in. We did not fill anybody in the seatbelt. That does not mean that you know the vehicle is not being cleared. So. I'm going to kind of let you make this decision for us. I know it's a tough one. We can pull out of here and we can go search Priest Lake, Priest Lake and a few other uh, boat ramps in the area. Or we can stay and spend the next two hours and pull this uh, Denali out and then focus on uh, your search further tomorrow. What would you, oh. what would you like us to do? Oh, there is another boat ramp about a mile down from where you are. Okay. So you would prefer that one before Priest Lake? Yes. Okay. I'll take the boat down river and then I'll have uh, Sam and the guys meet me down there with the RV. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll keep the search for you going. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <coughs> All right. So let's pack up and head down the stream a little bit. Because we've identified all three vehicles and none of them are the Camry that we're looking for with Bill in them. We are going to the other boat ramp, which is currently a closed boat ramp, but in looking at the satellite image of it, you can actually go from the public parking lot that's still open, and there's a walking path where if you really wanted to, you could be the vehicle down there. This is the boat ramp that Christine has mentioned after this one that we should go to. Matt didn't feel like a vehicle is going to be able to get there, you know, get down into the water. However, you know, we had another up there that said, I've driven on the grass, I've actually gotten down there, even though we're not supposed to. That being the case, and it's you know, nearby to Christine's home and Bill's home, it's 100% we have to clear that boat ramp, just so that way we know and Christine knows. On our route down, we're gonna cover the entire, we're, we're doing a wide scan on this, just as a single pass that we're heading down and cast like 100 foot wide on each side, just to see if by chance the other big storm or anything that may have or if the vehicle floated longer than you know, the vehicle normally would, it may just be down further than we're even expecting. I'm a nervous for 
trick, and I thought about it earlier, and I told somebody down there, the real skinny dude, yeah, our, tell you. Yeah, our skinny dude is Dan, so just to confirm, you have three uh, retention ponds near your house as well. Yes, in my neighborhood. Okay. So what we're going to do then, we're just, just to give everybody peace in mind, we're going to go clear this boat ramp real quick. It shouldn't take us too long. The uh, Matt, the officer that was up here, said that the boat ramp is actually closed over there, that you would actually have to drive down like a footpath to get to it. Um, so it should, it should just be a quick clear on it. They're going to pull the RV down there, and then we'll load the boat up from there. And if you can drop me your address, um, and sure. I can take a look at those that are retention ponds around your house. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Christine. And thank you so much. Uh huh. Bye bye. This location, Dan, was about six and a half, seven feet. Not much of a current the way that that whole boat ramp plays out. It's a really nice little cove, so the car is really not going to get sucked out into the current and go down very far. I see that there's another boat ramp on the other side. Might just want to check that real quick also while we're here. Alright, right here. I believe we have a car. Oops. Did it look like a car on second pass? Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't able to tell on the second one. I'll throw this 360 on, just kind of coast it down in that area. Yeah, suit up, I think we got something here. It's not no, it was grabbing, then it was pulling. What Sam's really trying to tell me is I really don't want to get back in the water right now. It's not a Camry is what he's telling me. I'm going to say it's old and rusted out. Alright, let's keep this moving then. We're going to coast down a little bit more. So this is where the that old car was. It's not sticking up. It doesn't have any wheels, so I'm just going to say that it's face down. Now that's going to be a little bit further up there by Sam is where it's going to pick up. So if, it, if we're still within zone, it's going to be pick, picking up right about here right now is where that one's at. You know, I, I actually don't know. I mean, it looks like it's upside down. Let me finish clearing this, but if you can just like dive it real quick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and mark it, go ahead and mark it. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, just, just come straight off that wall. Right. Or once you're suited up, I'll come and mark it again for you. I'll put a magnet on there for you. I'm thinking right, so right off the left, but then also right off the front. We're just gonna go right off the top. We got it right there. There's two right there. There's another one right here. But we haven't even gone up there yet. another car. Oh, and there's one right next to it too. Look. See that? One there, one there. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> uh, no, it's, a, oh, you, no, it's an old boat ramp. It's not even open anymore. Ah. So, therefore, 
So does that cancel that out? That means that cancels out. Let me go verify this. So if that's closed up there, that's gonna cancel out Bill. That's probably why they closed this boat ramp. So we're not even gonna be able to get them out of here. In order to get the cars out, we can float them across, but we have to have access over there. Go look at that. Yeah, yeah, go check it out. So, guardrails do look fairly new. So I just spoke with the gentleman right there in the red truck and he said they've been doing renovation on this house for the past year. And this barricade's been there for the past year. So that pretty much rules out this being a possibility for Bill, unfortunately. So I went and talked to the person who lives like right there. Uh -huh. And they said it's been there for more than a year. Okay. So kind of rules it out for Bill. Okay, so that rules that out. I mean, so yeah, we won't focus on diving these. We know about these now. This is 11, 12, or 13. Oh my gosh. We can come back for another time. Yeah. Well, in fact, there's another one right over here, off the side of the ramp over here. Uh, that makes 14 for you, Dan. <laughs> no, wow. wait, there's another one right here behind us too. Look, right there. That's 15. There could be some cold cases in there, Dan. Definitely. We're checking out for sure. Odds of 15 cars? Yeah, the know. odds are pretty good. Pretty crazy. We have another one over here, Dan. There's a, uh, 16 now. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna find another one. Oh, I'm back to Nashville. I like Nashville. Yeah. People are nice. The food is good. Food is good. How deep? 15. Cool. It doesn't look like the 15 to 17 cars over That's there. That's crazy. Still, we're still in the case of Bill, so we'll have, that'll have to wait another time. Yeah. yeah. I think Nashville is going to become our new Portland. Like we're just going to have to get a second home here, <laughs> and then we just fly in, and then we just do this every day. That house right there. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got some old car parts for the big old like tank. You remember when people used to heat their houses with oil? Yeah. There's like one of those big giant tanks down there. Okay. So. Weird. I don't know. All right. Yeah, this is just connected. There you go, you're free. All right, well let's get over to those uh, retention ponds. See what we can find over there. Easy. We've cleared this river as far as any potential for Bill being in here. There's no way that Bill could have gotten in on the other side, although there's 17 cars. We're not going to check them today. Back in January, February, each we're gonna make plans to come back for sure. These two boat ramps are clear, and now we're gonna go check out some retention ponds over by Christine's home. This is Gracie. I can't take your call right now. Leave a message, and I'll call you back. All right. So let's head over to uh, Lock Two Park. Where we're at right now, Dan, is we're in a different neighbor. So here's Christine's neighborhood over here, and this is right over here by the Lock Two Park that we were at. We have three retention ponds that are over in this area right here. And really, this is gonna be just be a foot pursuit right now to identify if a car has gone off in there. I mean, you're gonna notice some shrubs that have been knocked down even four months later. This pond here, I don't see anything happening in here because you're right next to the houses. Again, we're just, there's only two access points. So we can take a look and, and just do a quick foot walk on that one. Same thing with uh, this side here. Looks like a lot of trees and shrubbery. This one's completely enclosed. There's no way into this one. I just don't see anything else around the house. To me, it wouldn't make sense that if he was deciding to do this, that he would not have just gone into the water right there. Because that's right next to the neighborhood. Lock 2 Road, Lock 2 Park, right there. Thoughts? We need to go look at it, put eyes on it to rule it out. We've already ruled out one spot today. You need to two, two. Correct. We've already ruled out two spots. So and yeah. three because these retention ponds. Are yeah, yeah, this is good. So I think I think we should go put eyes on it. At least I mean we're, we're here it's just down the street, so might as well look at it. All right, let's go do that. I mean. So 
Hey, we're back at uh, Lock 2 Park. I wanted to check out this retention pond, see if there's anywhere where he might have gone into this pond at. Okay. There was one spot where it looked like some brush had been separated a little bit. Okay. So let's just kind of like make our way into there real quick. Take right. a look. We might even just be able to magnet fish it if it looks like a possibility. Okay. This is the one pond and then there's two more ponds in the neighborhood. Only one of the other ones you can get into. But does oh. that look like something went through there? Yeah, but I mean, but the weeds have grown up a lot. I mean, that's, we I mean, were thinking this happened in June. Yeah. I mean, by now, everything would have been grown up. Uh, hey Dan, just put the drone over there and just see if you can spot yeah. something in the water by chance. Yeah, I don't, almost. I don't think so. I think that's still growing up way too much. Yeah. Yeah, and you have a metal pole here, so no, nothing through here. So let's head, head into the neighborhood. Yeah, so that's the access point. That's just, that's just not enough there. Yeah, and then here's the other one right here. Dog kennel, trees. There's no way you're making making it into there. Trees are all grown up. Looks like there's a bluff back there. There? Maybe. Where did Jake go? So where you see those power lines, it's like a bluff right there. Okay. So what I had said to the officer was, of course in, in June this wouldn't be all grown up like it is now. There's an opening here in the fence and it just kind of drops off and I you know, maybe he did a Dukes of Hazard. Okay. Jump off of it? I mean, is that possible? A anything is possible. Okay, we'll, we'll get out and do a quick uh, foot... Uh, Visual? Yeah, on that. Okay. And see if there's something we're just not seeing from the aerial here. Like, this is really tall, and you have vines. I mean, that's definitely a big vine, and that's grown up through the... That, that's grown up... That big vine is, has been grown up through the uh, gate there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to scratch that one off okay. for now. He was already in pain. He was not going to be getting out and opening up other gates. No. If this is the path that we're going down. So with that, you know, we cleared the retention ponds. We cleared the boat ramp closest to. We cleared the other boat ramp down. That leaves us at Priest Lake tomorrow. Yeah. Long day of searching there, as well as a couple of other uh, boat ramps. Big shout out to Sam Sam, the adventure man, chaos divers, as well as all the volunteers that came out today. We're gonna continue this search tomorrow, so make sure that you uh, do subscribe and stay tuned because episode number two will be coming out either tomorrow or within the week of this going up. We don't know yet. In addition to the volunteers that came out today, we do wanna say thank you to Omaze once again. So please do me a favor, visit the link in the description below for omaze.com forward slash adventures with purpose for your chance to win that 1973 Scout 2 plus $20,000 in cash with all taxes and shipping included. Remember, it's supporting multiple good causes like us being on the road for this 2020 tour and helping as many families as we can in addition to the pediatric cancer program at the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt here in Nashville. Please support them. They're all supporting us. Thank you again for being here. We'll see you next time. Later, later. Bye-bye.